Hello everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Sama and um, well, I kind of do a little bit of everything on my channel. You know, pick and choose what you like. I just like share my obsessions with you guys as I obsess over them. Um, and today the obsession we're going to be focusing on is reading. Yes, I'm doing my first reading vlog. I'm very excited. I've been watching these for months on end. Like it's like almost all I watch on YouTube right now. Um, a, a bunch of my favorite channels you know i watch love watching people read or something so so exciting about it i don't know um but yes today i will be reading the six of crows duology well today let's be honest it's probably gonna take me at least a week to get through both of these depending on how much i like it um these have been on my tbr for a while i know there's like the shadow and bone is like connected to this but i read somewhere that you don't technically need to read shadow and bone to enjoy these two so i'm not gonna um because i don't know if i can do three more books before getting to these two so i'm just gonna go into the six of crows series um and then if i like this maybe i'll check out shadow and bone first thoughts opening thoughts a little nervous because i enjoy the occasional fantasy read you know like everybody else i i like a little magic in there i like a little monsters action you know dystopian um I don't even know what fantasy is like why am i questioning it anyways but at the same time they can be confusing and usually like the first half of fantasy books or like the first like two thirds takes me like forever to get through and then it's like that last half where you're like super into it and you finally like the world building's done and you finally like are attached to the characters and that's like that's what i love about them which is why i keep reading fantasy because at first i'm like why do i do this to myself this is so boring but then by the end i'm like like my head is spinning i'm i can't stop thinking about these characters and i know like like the six of crows fandom is like hardcore like they love these characters so i'm i'm i'm, I'm optimistic i think It'll be interesting, I will like it. And I've been talking for three minutes straight now, so why don't we just get into the reading? <laughs> I also like have a horrible habit of not reading the synopsis before getting into books, so I'm like terribly confused. I feel like I should read the synopsis for this, but I'm not going to. I like being surprised, you know, walking into a book and I know people like don't say don't judge a book by its cover, but that's all I do. Like if I like a cover, I'm like, oh, that looks like it's gonna be like this. I won't even read the synopsis, just goes into a blind. <laughs> oh god, the infamous, terrifying fantasy maps at the beginning of books that I'm not gonna look at maybe reference like twice while reading this. Oh god, we're already getting into like names of stuff, the Grisha. <laughs> I need to like make a map to remember everything. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm on the first page, but this sentence, if only Anya's eyes were blue like the sea or green like an emerald, instead her eyes were brown. Lovely, dreamy, dot, 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 melted chocolate brown, question mark, rabbit fur brown. Thank you, thank you, that makes me feel very loved. So I am, I've literally only read two chapters so far and I'm surprised at how like into this I am. Like it's definitely a slow read for me in terms of like actually getting through the pages just cause there's so many characters um, and like words you don't really know. But it's like the story is so interesting already which is awesome cause I feel like usually with fantasy book, the beginning is really slow because it's mostly world building, but I love it so far. The only thing is I hate that like every chapter is a new perspective. I just, that's the one thing I really hate about fantasy books, especially because I feel like as soon as you're like really getting into it and like the mo momentum is building for this one character, it's like cut and then you have to start over with the next chapter, which is what kind of like slows down my reading pace but yeah i really love it i think i'm gonna try and read part one tonight part one is the first 100 pages so i think i'm gonna try and finish that tonight and then tomorrow maybe read like part two and three is really good also um i love this kaz character um what he did in chapter two that was crazy i love a good like clever one step ahead character 
always my favorite. Good morning, everybody. So it's the next day. It's like 8, 9 a.m. I just woke up and I literally, first thing I did was grab the book. I'm surprised at how much I'm liking it. Like, like I said before, usually it, it, I have to push myself through the first half. But this is so interesting. So far, it's been like kind of a basic like mission story, you know. The leader gets news of a mission that he has to go on and then he starts recruiting people to help out but i'm excited to see where this goes i'm guessing there's going to be a little bit of like there's going to be like one or two traitors in the book you know either i'm thinking van eck or one of the six people in the group i don't know i i want to know more about what happened between nina and matthias is that his name because obviously she seems to really like him, but he hates her. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Also, side note, I don't think I mentioned this before, but if you have not read the book, I would stop watching this video now. Um, because I will be giving spoilers throughout this video. So um, I'm at the part where they're like, they were like, they got on the boat now to go to the ice court was it called um but then they got like ambushed by pekka rollins as people um and there's some seems to be like some, this like history between pekka rollins and kaz so i don't know if that was like talked about in the shadow and bone series or not or if like we're gonna get to know more about that later i don't know we'll see okay so i just had an idea um so we know that the three Grisha have had the drug already. So I'm thinking one of the plot twists might be that Nina will get drugged. Because we don't know. Because in the beginning they like teased at it. But then they were like the healer is a more smart corporal guy or whatever it's called to drug. Because the heartrender like literally can kill people. So you don't really want to like enhance their ability. So I feel like that was kind of like almost like a foreshadowing into we're going to see Nina get drugged and see what like her powers can do maybe. I don't know. Just found out that Jesper is a fabricator. He's a Grisha too. I was like, I love that man though. Um, also, I'm a little bit worried because... So obviously this job that they're on is dangerous. Like they've said that a million times. So I feel like at least one of them is going to die. And I, I don't want any of them to die. Like, I know it's going to be sad. I'm tearing up thinking about it. But also, the other thing I was thinking is, like, I'm only halfway through the book and they're already on the mission, like, doing it. Um, so obviously that means, like, there's going to be some plot twist towards the end. But then I'm wondering, like, what will the second book be about, you know? Because it can't, it's obviously not going to be about the same mission. I wonder if it's going to be about the same drug still, or... So, so far we've had the perspective of five of the thieves, I guess, that you could call them. Um, we've had everybody but Wylan. So my guess is he we're gonna like get his later on. You know, we're gonna get his thought process and stuff. Obviously we're gonna find out what happened with his dad. But I'm I'm also feeling like maybe he's the traitor like we're gonna find that out in his chapter although like i know like nina and what's his name matthias already like plan on killing the dude that they're trying to save so like maybe it's like multiple things will happen you know just a bunch of mistrust i break from reading to watch jack edwards talk about reading yeah that's how it works i just got to the part where like nina was with brahm and went to like the treasury and then she got locked in and Matthias 
Is that his name? I feel like I'm messing up his name. Anyway, Matthias shows up and he's like, did you really believe I'd turn against my nation? Did he turn against them? Or is this like part of his plan? I don't know. I feel like, I mm, I don't know. I don't know which would be, which would be more predictable for him to actually still be with the Druskel or for him to be pretending to be with the Druskel to help her out. I don't know. Let's see. This is so good, guys. I think he's for real turning against them. Okay, so we know, like, Matthias is, like, this goody two-shoes. Like, he's got, like, morals and stuff. So what happened right here is she just he just found out that Brom and, like, the Druskel, like, instead of killing the Grisha after trials, they actually have kept them in this, like, treasury place um, and have been using them as a resource, whatever that means. And he, and Matthias just goes, you told me they were to be er eradicated, that they were a blight on the natural world, okay? So my guess is he's gonna feel betrayed by the Drusco and realize he actually wants to help Nina and them. Is that correct? I don't know. I was right. Where is it? She'd shown him in a thousand ways that she was honorable and strong and generous and very human, maybe more vividly human than anyone he'd ever known. And if she was, then Grisha weren't inherently evil. Evil. They were like anyone else, full of the potential to do great good and also great harm. And then he goes on to make his mentor go unconscious i was right he's on our team still never mind i was right the first time he the entire thing was fake he pretended to be on team Druskel while still being on kaz's team anyway it's it's a very like predictable heist plot but it's okay as long as as long as they're still on the same team it's fine okay a little confused because Matthias got hit like shot and it said it went like through his chest so I thought he died that's that's what in the last clip that's what was happening but the next page he's talking did Nina like fix him I guess since she was on the drug maybe her powers were like bigger than normal so like she could I don't know I'm confused I knew Vanek would be trouble. I knew it. I was right. Okay, let's see where this goes. Okay, hello everybody. It is the next day. It's like 4 p.m. Um, I meant to film this earlier, but I got the world's worst migraine this morning, which is why I look like this right now. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better, so I thought I'd film this before I go back to sleep, but I finished Six of Crows last night, and I really liked it. Um, again, I, I keep- I feel like I've said this a million times throughout this video, but like, for a fantasy read, this, like, was so good for me. Like, I read it so fast, um, I finished it in like, just over two days, I think. And I- I like- I was surprised at how much I love the characters, and like, how quickly I became attached to them. I, really, I like, love these characters after the first time I heard about each of them, so, eh, yeah, well about um and then i started crooked kingdom a little bit last night and then this morning but again i got a migraine so i'm only 40 pages in um i'm enjoying it so far uh so i'm excited to see where this goes as well hello so i'm about almost halfway done with the book um I'm really enjoying it. I just finished the part where um, Wylan and Jesper went to visit his mom's grave only to find out that she's still alive, which I kind of ex I kind of saw that coming, um, especially after he was telling them how like his mom one day like had went to the country to get her lungs fixed and then the next she was dead. I was like, yeah, his dad definitely did something to her. Um, but that didn't make reading it any easier. Like, that was, that was a hard part to read. Um, overall, I'm really enjoying how 
we're getting more of Jesper and Wyland's stories. Um, we didn't really get much of them in the first book, so I like that they're like exploring the same characters but more in depth. Another thing I really like is Nina and Matthias's relationship. I love how it's like touching on how complex their relationship is and how they don't fully understand each other because of their different backgrounds it, and I, like I, I just I love I love complex relationships and I love that this author doesn't just she isn't just like these are like forbidden lovers but now they're together and all's well like she's actually exploring it I love it to speak I last night I like oh my I look so dead y'all it's been a rough week for me okay these migraines have not been it <laughs> last night I posted that I'm reading Crooked Kingdom on my Instagram story and somebody swiped up and they were like and bring some tissues too or whatever and so since then I've been scared to read because like a part of me knew it was gonna be sad in the end but now that it's like confirmed, like, you know when you know something sad so you don't want to continue with it now. But yeah, so last night as I was trying to sleep, I was like thinking what I think is going to happen and I think Nina's going to die. Like that's just my guess um, because, because I just feel like there's been a lot of like foreshadowing to it, you know, the yellow pill. Matthias's dreams, um, just the whole aspect of the forbidden love between them. But then there's a part of me that's like, what if that's what the author wants us to think? And then it's gonna be somebody else. And so if I had to guess another person, I, I feel like Wylan might die too. Wylan or Jesper, I mean, those three are, I, Nina's my number one, Wylan's my number two. And Jasper is my number three. And I'm very terrified because this author is very good at writing in the moment, moments. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be able to handle that. So my hope is that at least if somebody does die, it's like on the last page. So I don't have to like deal with the aftermath of their guilt and grief. I just finished the chapter where Kaz... It's like fixing Inez's um, band-aids, bandages. And wow, wow, wow. This author's ability to like write complex relationships and um, like carry that through is amazing. Like I love how she gave them this one like really intense chapter, but that, that wasn't like the resolution to their relationship. Oh my God. So good, so good. Guys, I think Matthias was killed. What the fuck? This is the last person I expected to, oh my, holy sh Bro, I'm literally like two seconds away from throwing up crying tears of blood. This is why books where romance is like secondary, second, uh, secondary and like subplot is so much better than books where it's like, like romance book. I literally want to like oh, on the verge of a panic attack. Guys, he got shot in the stomach and I'm pretty sure he's dying. And he ran all the way and he tells me that he kisses her first, first of all. And then he tells her all I wanted was to see you once more. I'm trying not to cry, but this is getting pretty close. Like this is as emotional as I get for books. 
Um, and then and then Nina is like he's looking. She's looking for someone to give her more of the Perem, so she can try and save him. Basically, like risking her own life to save him. This is the Romeo and Juliet retelling that we didn't know we needed, but we needed. Wow! 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 Let me. Whew. Ooh, it's getting intense. My lie, he goes, I have been made to protect you. Even in death, I will find a way. Bury me so I can go to Del. Del. Bury me so I can take root and follow the water north. And then Nina says, Oh my god. He, Nina says, I promise, Matthias, I will take you home. And he says, Nina, he said, pressing her hand to his heart, I am already home. Light vanished from his eyes, his chest stilled beneath her hands. Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, um. So I have finished The Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. If you watch my May re. re my May wrap up video, you'll notice that what I'm gonna say in this video is a little different from that one. Um, and that's just because when I made that video, I talked about Crooked Kingdom like right after I finished it and I've had a few days to sit with it now. I honestly do think I liked Crooked Kingdom more than Six of Crows, but that's only because Six of Crows existed. You know, I think that we got Six of Crows like laid the foundation for the story. We got more character development and we got to like see the characters grow. Um, in the second book and get like more of their relationships. Why is it blurry? Yeah, honestly, I really So one of the biggest reasons why I don't enjoy fantasy reads is because a lot of the time I found I actually found a tweet about this Let me I think I screenshotted it. Okay. Yeah, so it says it kind of amuses me when white people don't want non-white people in their sci-fi slash fantasy when most of these stories are just allegories about how non-white people are treated for a certain type of white fan, I think the real fantasy appeal is getting to imagine you're resilient. Um, this tweet and then like a bunch of the replies as well as quote retweets stand very true. And I think this is part of the reason why I don't enjoy fantasy that much is because as you're reading it, it, it very much is evident. It's just like imperialism, colonialism, but instead of it being humans, it's wizards and grisha and aliens instead and that just doesn't sit right with me especially when the author is white um i just don't enjoy reading that and i got a little bit of that while reading six or crows like when it was mentioned how like the suli were treated like the different groups treated each other differently and like i don't know if the merchants were white but while reading it, I imagine white, I imagine like Van Eck and Pekka Rollins to be white people. So that like just doesn't sit right with me that the rest of the groups are non-whites and they're like being put up for slavery and stuff. And then you have the white people who are just rich and wealthy and run the society. Um, I don't know, like can we get fantasy that's more like just people messing around with their powers, having fun instead of oppressing each other um yeah so i usually don't like fantasy because of that but like when i was able to put that aside i enjoyed the book mostly because of the characters um i think the characters were very well developed and that was like the saving grace of the book also i just love like the illusion sleight of hand tricks that they played um like always being one step like has always having like a million plans in his head working like 15 steps ahead um that was fun to read about and yeah overall like it was a good experience the books are pretty good i don't know if i'll ever read them again but i'm glad that i like got to read them because they're so popular and like now i can see what everybody was raving about and yeah, I actually really had fun filming this reading vlog. It's my first reading vlog ever, but it was so fun. I think I might do another one soon. Um, I was thinking about maybe um, doing one when I reread to all the boys I've loved before. That is my all-time favorite comfort series, so I thought that would be fun because they're just going to see me like squealing half the time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know what you think of Six of Crows. Um, and yeah, bye. See you guys later.